In this video, I'm going to show you guys the one piece of gear on my telescope setup that I believe had the greatest impact on how I take my pictures of space. It's actually not the camera, the mount, or the telescope. It's a computer. Can you see it? It's called the Quieter 3Q. It's a mini PC made by the company Mealy, and it hasn't let me down in the year and a half that I've been using it so far. Three years ago, back in 2020, I built up my first astrophotography setup. I distinctly remember the first night I got to use everything once it was all bought and set up. I brought out my laptop and put it on a chair next to my setup, and I remember thinking, man, this is a lot messier than I thought it was gonna be. Long story short, the winters here in Chicago get pretty rough. Rough. Every year we have a week or so where a cold snap comes through and you're imaging in 10, 15 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And back in January 2021, I was in one of those weeks and I brought out my laptop and the laptop did not make it through the night. Since it was made for indoor use and it was an indoor computer, it was completely my fault for bringing it out there, but it did not survive those cold temperatures. Wouldn't start up the next morning, plugged it in, let it warm up for two days, it was done. So I ended up doing some research for the next couple months and I was introduced to the wonderful world of mini PCs. This one, as I mentioned earlier, is the Mealy Quieter 3Q. All of my gear will always be listed in the description, so if you're curious about buying one of these for yourself, it's linked down there. But basically, this $200 computer doesn't have a screen, a keyboard, it doesn't have anything. But what it does have are USB ports and a power cable. So if you have access to an outlet or a power bank, you can power this. It doesn't need to be charged or anything, it just runs off of AC power. And you have four USB ports in there to connect to all your gear. But like I said, it doesn't have a screen on it. So how do I use it for astrophotography? Well, it may not have a screen, but it does have an HDMI port on the side. So for first time setup, I just plugged it into one of my monitors inside and I got it all hooked up to the Wi-Fi. But how I use it while it's outside is actually pretty cool. I use an app on my phone and it's available for desktop computers too. I've mentioned this app before in previous videos. It's called AnyDesk. It's a business app, meaning it's used for online working and being able to manage your co-workers computers from remote locations but how I use it is once my computer is connected to my household Wi-Fi I can just go on my phone and connect to it wirelessly so while I'm out here I can see what's going on on my phone not only can I do that but I can actually control it so I have a little mouse and cursor that I can move around with my finger on the touch screen but also when I head inside I can use my desktop computer inside and manage my setup completely remotely I don't even have to be next to it. This software is completely free to use. There's no trial or anything. It's just you download it and it's ready to go. And I've been using it for over a year now. So it'll be linked down in the description below with this computer. Now what's cool about this is this computer doesn't need to be hooked up to the same Wi-Fi as my phone or my desktop computer. I could run this in a different country. And as long as this is connected to Wi-Fi and my home computer is connected to Wi-Fi, I can talk to the computer. It's very secure and there's a million digit code you need to put in to access this computer but you can actually save it so you don't need to enter the code every time just a one-time thing just to protect it from other people now obviously the big con of this is that your computer and your setup need to be within range of a Wi-Fi signal so I lucked out and I'm at the very back of my yard where I can see all the clear skies but I still have access to the home Wi-Fi but if your yard is pretty big and you're generally set up in the back I would look into how far your Wi-Fi extends something I did for when I'm imaging in remote locations was I set it to auto connect to my phone phone's cellular hotspot when I turn that on. So within 30 seconds of me turning on my phone's hotspot, the computer will disconnect from whatever Wi-Fi it was connected to, if it was connected to any, and it'll automatically connect to my phone. Which is really handy, but keep in mind that it only works when you're within range of a cellular tower. The reason this PC is called the Quieter 3Q is because it's a completely fanless system. It doesn't have any sort of cooling system in the computer, so it's completely silent, which actually is really nice for astrophotographers because we don't need that and it reduces the price of these computers by a lot. Mini PCs with fans in them are a lot more expensive which is why I went for this one. The only season of the year where I risk my PC overheating at all is in the summer, aka now, but I've never had that happen and I've gone through almost two full summers using these PCs now. So unless your nights are abnormally hot, you shouldn't have to worry about this. Most of the time, actually, I just have to worry about my PC getting too cold. It's the only technically indoor piece of equipment on my setup. Everything else is made to be outside shooting in the field, but this is just made to be mounted on the back of a TV technically, so I just have to make 
sure the temperatures don't get too extreme out here. But in general, if you were to replace anything on my setup, the first thing I would go for is that mini PC because it is probably the least expensive thing on there besides the cables and stuff. So obviously I'm not saying to treat it like garbage, but just keep in mind it's a lot better to break one of these due to the temperatures than a full on laptop that you have outside. I'm not gonna just stand here for this whole video and talk about this mini PC though. In a few moments, I'll put my money where my mouth is and demonstrate for you guys what a night of imaging from this backyard looks like completely using just this mini PC. I can't believe I'm finally getting to say this now, but the target that I'm gonna capture tonight is the Elephant's Trunk Nebula in the constellation Cepheus. The reason I'm so excited about this is this is my first relatively fall target that I'm gonna capture this year. I've spent the last two months now going over Milky Way targets and Cygnus targets, and I'm starting to get really tired of those typical summertime nebulae. So as soon as that time of year comes where Cassiopeia and Cepheus start to rise, I get really excited because those are the two constellations that when I see them rising, they signify that my favorite time of year for astrophotography is just around the corner. Alright, it is 9.45 p.m. right now, which in astrophotography terms, it is go time. So here's the game plan for the rest of the video. I generally keep my setup in the same spot throughout the year. It's in that, you know, that back left-hand corner of my yard because that's the spot with the most clear skies. But depending on what region of the sky I'm imaging, I move it in any direction a little bit just so that I can get a little bit extra time in the gaps in the trees that my yard has. So in this case, the constellation I'm going after tonight is Cepheus, which is in a different spot entirely than Cygnus is, so that means different trees that I have to worry about. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to move my mount back into the left of where it is right now, so that's the first step. Once it's back into the left, I'm gonna have to polar align, which if you were watching last week's video that I made about polar alignment and PhD2 guiding, you'll know that I'm a little bit nervous about this tonight. It took so long to get myself polar aligned in the last video, so I'm praying I don't need to go through that again. But yeah, once I'm all set up and ready to go, then I will walk you through the functions of any desk in terms of astrophotography and what's useful and what you can ignore. I'm not going to go through how to set up your devices with any desk because if you're interested enough to download it in the first place, that link in the description will automatically take you to a step-by-step -step guide on their website on how to download and set everything up, which they could explain that a lot better than I ever could, so I'm going to let them take care of that. But yeah, what this video is going to be useful for is figuring out how to navigate any desk and the tips and tricks that I have specifically for astrophotography. The clouds seem to have completely dissipated. Now, obviously, I just jinxed myself, so it's going to be overcast in about 30 seconds. It's looking really good. The on and off clouds that were going on throughout the day were, are completely gone now, and the seeing is great. So for the last smokeless night of imaging for a little while, this is going to be a good one. All right, so I'm now all the way polar aligned. It took a little bit longer than it normally does on average, but it took a lot shorter than it did in the last video, so that's always a good thing. The polar alignment process was the last step of getting my setup all ready to go, so I'm ready to hop into any desk and show you guys some tips. So just as a basis of where you should be right now, I'm assuming that you have any desk completely downloaded and all of your devices are set up that you want to use. So that includes whatever computer that you're running your setup with and whatever devices you'll be active accessing that computer from. All right, so as you can see, I'm in the AnyDesk app on my phone right now. I have two registered devices on my AnyDesk network other than my phone. I have my setup and my laptop. My laptop is inside what I use to go from inside, and then my setup is obviously the mini PC on my telescope setup. So the green check mark means that you're connected to the Wi-Fi and ready to go. Before you actually log on to your setup, make sure that you are off of 
whatever Wi-Fi that your home is on. Make sure that you're going off of cellular data because I find that when I'm trying to talk to the router and I'm out in my yard, if any desk doesn't like the connection speed that it's at, if it's too slow or anything, it won't pop up with any warning message at all. It'll just close out the session that you're in with no warning. And I find that it happens very frequently, even with a strong Wi-Fi connection if you're a little bit far away from the router. So make sure you have Wi-Fi disabled on your phone or whatever device you're outside with and make sure you have cellular on. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on setup and then now I am logged on to my computer screen. The first thing you want to do is understand how you can get to your settings. If you swipe from the right edge in from your phone, you can see that it pops up with a menu of little things you can do. Now I'm holding my finger on the screen right now to keep it up, but normally what you do is you'd swipe and then you go in whatever direction you want to select from. So I'm, in this case, I'm going to go to settings and then I'm gonna let go over settings. So these are your master controls. This is where the magic happens. 90% of the time I have my connection speed on speed. I don't have it on quality. The only reason I would have it on quality is if I'm inspecting the pixels of a sub exposure or test exposure for like checking focus or noise or things like that. Then I'd set it to quality for a quick second, inspect my image and then set it back to speed. Preserve details and detect connection speed. They're not really important. I leave them on just because it helps in a tiny bit, but it doesn't really matter if you have them on or off. The big thing you wanna have on is auto adapt resolution. This will change the resolution of your display to match the device you're viewing it on. So you'll see when I head out for a second, now it's in the 16 by nine format, whereas before it was a little bit cropped in. So that's good. Everything else is kind of all up to personal preference. I have touchpad mode on, but you can turn it off if you want. I just find it easier to drag around and control the mouse on the screen, like I would with a computer. The last piece of advice I have for using a mini PC is to zip tie whatever cables that you have running from your mini PC to your camera or your mount. I have a lot of my cables wound up and zip tied together to sort of shorten their distance so that they're not dangling down. The only ones that I do have dangling down are my mount and power cables, which need to be connected to an outlet or an extension cable. So as much as I say, if you are fine with your cable spaghetti and it's not snagging on anything, go for it. There is a limit to that where it just becomes impractical. You don't wanna be digging through a sea of cables to get to your focus knob or your power switch. A couple cables here and there is completely fine, but in general, you wanna be organized with your setup. And yeah, if you guys are having any issues with your mini PC or I missed a step and you're confused about something, ask me questions in the comments. I will be responding to whatever questions you guys have. I hope these tips helped you a little bit with figuring out what you want to do, whether you're running a laptop right now and you want to upgrade to a mini PC or just figuring out how to use the mini PC that you already have. So now that I've gone over everything I wanted to talk about regarding mini PCs, here's the plan for the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. The plan was originally going to be three minute sub exposure for the elephant's trunk nebula because I thought there were going to be intermittent clouds that were going to go through so I wanted to get as many usable sub exposures as I could but it is looking completely clear so I'm going to bump it up to five minutes which should get me a little bit better of an image. I can see Cepheus rising above the trees now with Cassiopeia and Cygnus is about to hit the trees that go straight above my house so I am saying out with the old and in with the new I am really excited for this fall. I really am loving making these YouTube videos. I'm having so much fun telling the story of each image that I make and putting my love for filmmaking and videography and music into astrophotography and sharing it with you guys. I hope you like watching these videos as much as I love making them, but most of all, I hope they help you in some way, whether that is inspiring you to take your own pictures or getting a mini PC like I was talking about or any of the things I talk about on my videos. I hope that it has an impact on you in some way. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the image of the elephant's trunk nebula you're about to see. I will see you guys on the next clear night.